hey guys what's up this is manas and i'm back with a new tutorial on conic sections and this time around we're gonna be dealing with ellipse and uh, I've, and i'm pretty much sure that you guys have seen my previous tutorials um of based on oblong method based on what you call arcs of circles method and concentric circles method so this time around i've taken up yet another problem from ellipse so let's kick off two fixed points a and b are 100 mm apart Trace the complete path of a point P moving in the same plane as that of A and B in such a way that the sum of its distances from A and B is always same and equal to 125 mm. Well, that looks very confusing, isn't it? Not to worry, not to worry. We're going to sort it out. So there are two points A and B. These are the two fixed points or what you call focus. So we have foci in the form of a and b uh, which are separated at 100 mm apart and there is this guy this point b and it always moves in such a way that the sum of its distances from a that is pa and the sum of its distance uh, and its distance from b that is pb is always same and it is equal to 125 mm so there is a relationship which we can work out from this particular problem that says that pa plus pb is equal to 125 mm Alright, so guys, let us write down all those things which have been given to us. So there are two fixed points A and B, which we're going to term it as foci, plural of focus. Alright, now these two points A and B, these two points are actually 100 millimeters apart. Alright, 100, I'm going to write 100 over here. Now, the, there is a point P, which always uh, tends to maintain this uh, relationship, um, which says that PA plus pb the sum of its distances from a and b that is pa and pb plus pb is equal to 125 mm now guys i'm going to show you a definition of ellipse which is really going to change your mind please watch this definition now this definition over here says it it is a locus of a point moving in a plane such that the sum of its distances from two fixed points always remains constant all right and the sum equals to the length of major axis okay so pa plus pb has been given as 125 millimeters and this 125 millimeters is none other than your major axis all right so this is what you call 125 mm we're going to represent this by major axis and uh, we're going to represent major axis by two endpoints let us say we're going to represent it by st and minor axis endpoints we are going to represent it by CD. Now guys if you have seen my previous problems, um, I have always represented major axis by endpoint A and endpoint B. This time around I have changed the convention or the nomenclature. I have used S and T instead of A and B. Can you work out as to why I have done this? Because as far as the problem is concerned, you need to um, show that A and B. The foci has been represented by A and B. Names of A and B have, has already been taken by the focus. Alright, so we are going to give some different name to the ends of major axis. So that's why. Okay, I am going to show you one more slide, one more picture which is really going to show you as to why this relationship is pretty much true. Um, please watch this carefully guys. Um, Please uh, have a look at this point. Suppose this is point P1. If you take this distance P1 F1 and if you take this distance P1 F2 and you sum these distances, if you add these distances that is P1 F1 plus P1 F2, this sum will be equivalent to this distance that is AB major axis. Alright. Now if the point suddenly shifts to this point over here, suppose it becomes P2. Okay, so P2 F1 plus P2 F2 will always be equal to the major axis. I'm going to re refer it to as the major axis and not by AB because as far as my question is concerned, we are referring major axis as CST. All right, whereas the focus, the distance between the focus have been given as what you call uh, A and B. All right, so let us start by making this problem. So initially, I'm going to draw a line. So here we have a horizontal line. This line is the distance between the focus and the distance between the focus 
has been given as 100 millimeters so let me write 100 over here okay now this is a this is b so let us write a and b over here what to do is to fix the major axis now major axis you know is this 125 millimeters okay so what i'm going to do is the half of 125 is 62.5 so i'm going to go 62.5 to the right then back to the center i'm going to go here 62.5 over here we again have our second endpoint of the major axis in the form of t and uh, guys uh, remember this is focus second focus all right and this is over here is the first focus fine now the next thing to draw is to draw the minor axis so it, it it should lie somewhere over here i'm going to randomly draw a line uh, passing through the midpoint of ST or you can al al also call it as AB. Alright, next thing to do is to use a relationship that I've had already developed and if you have seen my previous videos, um, then you should be familiar with it. Now guys, uh, please have a look clear, ha have a careful look at this relationship. CF1 is equal to OA. Alright, now as far as my particular question is concerned, we have C, fine. But in place of focus 1, we have used A. So I'm going to write A over here and in we have O, right? We have O and instead of A, we have used S. All right. Instead of A, we have used S. Instead of F1, we have used A. All right. O, S. O is known to us. S is also known to us. A is also known to us. The only guy remaining is C. Okay. So with A as center and with O, S as a radius. We're going to put an arc. Please note this down with A as center and with OS as the radius. We're going to put an arc. All right. And OS as radius. We need to put an arc. All right. So we have, we have, you can see this. Okay. The center was A. Radius is going to be OS. Take a center, put a knock over here. That's it. Next thing to do is again do the same thing down below. Find then. I'm going to solve this particular problem with the help of oblong method. I'm going to um, please look at this carefully. guys keep on watching the construction and it is self-explanatory all right next thing to do is to divide this line over here into three equal parts and again this line over here into three equal parts and for that uh, please watch this small little construction over here that's it now you need to put arcs over here 10 mm arcs Well, I'm going to put an arc here again. Base point is going to, this is the second arc. So I have to do three parts. So for that, I need to put up three arcs. So this is, this was my third arc. Next thing to do is joining this third arc with the end point of this line and keep your mini drafters along this line. Make sure the screw is absolutely tight. Then move it to the second point, draw a line, Move it to the second point, first point, then again draw a line. I'm going to chop off these lines. Um, and that's almost done. Okay. Now, same stuff has to be repeated in this line over here also. So, again, I'm going to randomly draw a line at any suitable angle. Okay. Now, again, I'll put up an arc over here, a 10 centimeter arc, uh, not 10 centimeter, rather a 10 millimeter arc. All right, I'm going to reduce the length of this arc. Okay, again, I'm going to copy this. And that looks good. Second arc, and this is going to be my last third arc. 
fine tighten the screw keep your drafters one scale of your drafter along this line then move to the second point it should be absolutely parallel move towards the first point all right it's almost done let us chop off the portion of line which has come inside this uh, all right now next thing to do is to join this line with this point c over here these two lines over here okay you remember the steps then we're gonna start drawing lines from this t point we're gonna let it join over here then one more from t it's going to join here so these are the two lines so we can so the next thing to do is to extend this line towards this line that can be done by this next thing to do is to extend this line to this line that's it so these are the two points which i was um, concerned about and same stuff can be repeated in this particular quarter of the ellipse also or that's it now i'm going to repeat this same thing here again that's about it and the next thing is going to be that's it that's it let us extend this line to this line and this line towards the second line over here that's it now guys uh, the next step is pretty simple you just need to mirror all these points down below okay I'll show you how. Uh, make sure your drafters are absolutely perpendicular. Okay, bring them down, bring them down. Again, bring them down and bring them down. All right, so this length over here, okay. So this length over here should be down below. Okay. Make sure you're doing exactly this. Take an arc from this point to this point. Turn it over. Alright. Bring it to this point. Then. Same thing. The distance which is above. Should be equal to the distance which is below. Alright. So this is exactly how you need to do your stuff. Um. I'm going to do the same thing over here. That's exactly what I was talking about. And finally, we are going to join all these points with the help of a smooth curve. And that smooth curve is nothing, it's none other than ellipse itself. So ST as major axis and CD as minor axis. Here, guys, we have in front of us the very popular curve that is ellipse. All right. Let, let us darken this up a little. That's exactly what I was talking about. So this is how we have solved this particular problem with the help of oblong method. All right. And if you have seen my first three tutorials based on conic section, um, initially I started off with oblong method. And then I started off with um, what you call concentric circles method followed by arcs of circle methods. I find this method to be very easy. Um, compared to the other two okay so guys that was all from my side and if you have any questions or queries you can uh, write them in the comment section below um please keep on visiting my channel again and again and i'll be uploading a lot of good stuff in the coming one one and a half months so thank you for watching and uh, let's meet again with a new problem and with a new set of ideas thank you bye bye good night